Patek Philippe has introduced a new watch called the Cubitus. Let's talk about this thing. I will tell you, when I saw this initially, I thought it was a joke. It turned out it was not a joke. It, it, this is a real release. And I'll be honest, I hate it. I hate it. What do you think about this? I've called this the crapitus. The cra <laughs> That's what it, I, I, like, this is, this is garbage juice. Oh, this my is, goodness. This is the juice at the bottom of the garbage bag that nobody wants to touch because it's gross and you don't know what's in it. And you're just like, this is disgusting. That's so what this watch The is. thing that throws me is, you know, whenever I think of Patek Philippe, I think of the Nautilus, I think of the Aquanaut, I think of the Calatrava. I see some diversity in, in the design, different shapes. They have storied history going back so many years. Right. You right. Look They're at, a holy trinity brand. You look at each one of their models and you're like, that's classy. Yeah. That's, ooh, that's nice. Very that's classy. Refined. But then I look at this and it's like a hodgepodge of the Nautilus and even the name, Cubitus. Nautilus, Cubitus, and, and I mean... 45 millimeters in diameter. I actually love that, but I know I'm in the minority. There. Yeah, I, it's going to wear like a dinner plate on your wrist. I can't believe it. I can't believe this is real. They they took so much time and effort, first new collection in 25 years, yeah. that they smacked a regular old round movement in I there. I see that. Nothing yeah. super fancy there. It looks like a BR, what is it, zero? BR05. 505 out does. of Bell and Ross. Nothing wrong with Bell and Ross. It's a great watch. I like Bell and Ross. I love Bell and Ross, but not for 40 <laughs> some grand. You know, you look at that and you're like, you have the same bracelet as the Nautilus, yeah. same dial, all this. You've just tweaked the proportions. The color is amazing. That's the one plus on it. I adore that green. It's beautiful. Yeah. The, I would, the color I would, is beautiful. Yeah, I would have that, that dial in about 17 other watches. But the lack, the complete lack of originality and a brand considered to be a holy trinity brand. Right. It kind of boggles my mind. Like, I look at this, and I know people make fun of, hey, it looks like a micro brand, but they're not wrong. I know. I've reviewed several watches that if you squinted your eyes or you were just across the room, it would be almost indistinguishable from yeah. multiple micro brands well, that right. have been released. You've reviewed probably three or four of them yourself. You I, know? I, yeah. You can put up some videos right here and just be like, check this out. Or it's like, you know, still yeah. shot. What about this? What about this? What about this? Yeah. They're all over the place. And <clears throat> I've seen very few people online that like this. There are fans, but the majority of the uh, reaction has been negative. So... I don't know what you think. Paddock is is, uh, is acutely aware of the conversation happening now. So I'm gonna drop a little uh, quote on you from Thierry Stern, who is the, is the man, right? Grand president, the, right? the president. He is the end all be all for Patek. Okay. Okay. The haters are mostly people who have never had a Patek and never will. So that doesn't bother me. What? That's legit. A direct quote, not. Through different levels, wow. he said this, or I think That's he said That's not like this. a hot mic moment. Nope. He was... Nope. That is in publications with a legit interview where he says the haters are mostly people who have never had a Patek and never will, so that doesn't bother me. Now... I, I'm, I'm shocked because, I mean, how tone deaf is that? Well, it's unbelievably tone deaf. It's arrogant as I've ever heard any brand. And yeah, you can say... Patek's arrogant, but guess what? They had the class, the refinement, the history yeah. of not screwing it up that they could kind of fall back on. They don't have wow. a lot of missteps, you know? And this is a huge misstep. So when it's when it's clear that the majority of people don't like this release, he doubles down. Correct. He wow. wanted this watch. He wanted to, to create something new. He had identified that they did not want to be AP and just have one one model that they were famous for, right? AP, Royal Oak, churns them out left and right, special editions, steel, jumbo, you name it. They don't care, they'll sell them all. Patek did not want that for the Nautilus. They discontinue it. They transition to the 5811 precious metal. But this makes no sense then. Right? R well, if you don't want to be a one-trick pony, what are you doing with the Cubitus? Well, they realize that they can't sell enough Calatravas and subscription uh, master, you know, complication type okay, pieces. Okay, that makes sense. They've got to keep the lights on. 
Sport is what sells. That's what drives right? the, the money these it, days. Exactly. And if not everybody's getting the 5811s and platinum or whatever, what are you going to do? Wow. And they don't want the $25,000 Calatrava. Well, we got to have something. And they can't just start bumping up more Nautilus production. Exactly. Right? And people don't, maybe they don't want the Aquanaut. Not, and a lot of people do, but maybe not everybody does. They want the bracelet yeah. option. And Well, you bring up the Aquanaut and that... That watch was not received well when it debuted. Uh, it was on a rubber strap, like <laughs> paddock rubber strap that had not been done. Yeah, it had the texture dial that looked like a grenade. It was kind of a dog. Yeah, uh, I love it personally, but it was not received well. Do you think this Cubitus, which is definitely not being received well, and we've got a tone deaf brand president, is it going to turn a corner and it's going to be a hot commodity that people are just lining up to go buy. I legitimately think that this is just a hype model. This is something that they will sell because that's what they do. Uh, yeah, it's, right? a, it's a sport paddock, believe me. And that's what it is. And that's why it'll sell. It's not going to sell because of its intrinsic beauty. It's amazing quality. <laughs> it, it's not going to sell for anything besides being a hype model. And that's it. There's really no other way to boil it down. This was supposed to be the starter watch, the way to open up the crowd, you know, like to, to say, come on in. Look, we don't have a 5811 for you, but we've got this. We'll get you the Cubitus. <laughs> so so the brand's looking for new new clientele. Yep. And the, the brand presence, like, yeah, we don't want you guys anyways. Like, what is going on? It just it shows the level it. of disconnect. Wow. I mean, it really does. And they realize they've got to they've got to pay the bills, so we've got to sell some watches, so let's churn some of these bad boys out. It it just is such a misstep. You go from 40 low 40s for the still, then you jump up into I think the 60s for the two tone. Yeah, this one. Yep. And then you jump to I think close to 80 or maybe over 80 for the uh complication with the sure. grand date and everything. But again, with that, <clears throat> the the symmetry is off you've got sub dials and grand date a big date and all this like it's just a mishmash of stuff it's designed by somebody mr stern who's not a designer and maybe that's why he's so protective over it he's like hey this is my thing and i love it oh everyone else hates it well screw you guys right like it, there's a natural tendency to do that for sure uh like there's a reason why i don't have my own watch company <laughs> as much as i think that i can design watches sure i consistently come up with things and i'm like ah, that's not that good like i'm just not a designer i know what i like and that's something i don't like so let, let's end with this robert I mean, I think we're in agreement. This is a head scratcher. We're not interested. But the brand president saying, well, if you don't like this, you know, we're not the brand for you anyways. Right. It's, as harsh as it is, as tone deaf as it is, is it true, though? Like, are we, we're not, he's not trying to reel us into the brand. Like, I think that there is, as with most things, some somewhere lies in the middle. Like, okay. that's where it is. Yes, we are not its core demographic. You know, here we're wearing a Tudor, an Atelier Wen, like great watches in their own right, but nowhere near Patek. So, right. so there is that. But I'm telling you now, there are enough people that are the core demographic, that have the means, that would go and open up their wallet immediately for a Nautilus or you name for it. For a hot new ticket yes, item. they would do it. They don't like this watch. Huh. So so for him to come out and say, if you don't like this, it's not for you, it's it's just tone deaf. It's not a good take. Wow. I, I, uh, I, I'm still kind of shocked that this was not a joke. But um, it, you know what it is, though? This is, this is a great opportunity for the people to see this and go, you know what? If Patek did it, anything's possible. Like, it doesn't matter. <laughs> like, I can, I can design a watch. If they can design that, then maybe I could design a watch. Yeah. Well, I, I already said we we're going to end, but one more question, Robert. Seeing this, like, you probably had a desire to buy a Calatrava or an Aquanaut or a Nautilus. Seeing the Cubitus, are you turned off by this brand now? Like, do you not have it? Or would you still buy into this brand in the future? I will, I will say this. It would give me pause because there, I mean, I could be completely off base, but I'm pretty confident that this, even with its inflated secondary market prices, you know, because that's what's going to happen. Sure. It's going to have a, a negative 
effect on the perception of the brand. The general brand. Yes. It's going to bring the yes. general brand perception down a right. little bit. Right. It's going to just to chip, some degree. Exactly. A little a little chip in the armor, you know, it's just going to be ever so slight, but it's going to be there. And you think about, you know, using watch terms, a nice chip or crack in that enamel dial, <laughs> it, it's pretty noticeable, right? Uh -huh. And it, it devalues that watch. So I would I would seriously consider if I had the means at the moment, I would probably go to AP. I probably would go to Vacheron. Longa. Yes, I would go to Longa. You can get a ton of stuff. Moser, one of my absolute favorites, right? There are so many amazing watches. And if we're talking 40 grand, 40 for steel, grand for, for steel. steel, I'm getting multiple absolute bangers. Probably in precious grand. metal, too. In precious metal. More complicated. Yes. Yeah. I, it's wild. It's nuts. Yeah. Bravo, Patek. <laughs>